In this episode, we are going to talk about diode and its application. So, what is the whole point of making this semiconductor, the n-type, the p-type, the any other type of things we've already discussed in the previous episode? What are we trying to achieve? So here we are going to bring the practical aspect of whatever we have already discussed. So let's look at the diode and how we can apply it, the basic characteristics of diodes. So if we look at a diode, it is a small piece of semiconductor material. And usually we are going to always consider the silicon. Although we can use the germanium to form a diode, but in all the episodes of this video or this playlist, we are going to talk about silicon being used. So what we see is that a diode is a small piece of semiconductor material in which half of it is doped as a P region and half is also doped as what? An N region. So there is going to be a PN junction and a depletion region. All this, we discussed it in the previous episode, how the N is formed, the P region is formed, what is the PN junction, what is also the depletion region. So now we have all those things in one single silicon doped atom. We are going to see that the P region is anode and it is always connected to a conductive terminal. And the N region is also called the cathode, and it is connected to a second conductive terminal. So we are going to pass current through this diode, or we are going to produce some current through this diode. And as we know, part of it is a P region, meaning there is more positive terminals or more positive ions that the absence of the electrons. And in the N region, we are going to have more electrons as negative charges. So we are going to connect the anode to the positive side. And anode, which basically means it's a positive one, and the cathode to the negative part, which is basically referring to as the negative part. So this is a diagram of a diode where we have the N region the P, the yellow representing the PN junction, and this part and that representing the depletion region. Are we okay? Now, this is the symbol for a diode. So, cathode, we are going to represent by K. The reason why we are calling the cathode as K because if we use C, there are other electric or the other terminals that we can represent by C. We will see why we are not representing this by C. Let's use the K for cathode. But the anode is going to be the same as what A. Are we good? So when we look at the symbol, this is the anode part, which is the positive, and this is the cathode part, the K, which is the negative. So wherever you see the symbol, it reminds you of what? A diode. So in practical terms, we have different forms of the diode. But one thing you always use to recognize the diode is that it is a two-terminal device, two-terminal. So what you can see here, they are all diodes. So the first one, two-terminal, it will show you the A so that you see that that region is more of what positive than the K, which is more of negative. Are we good? Because it is very important to always figure the part which is the cathode and the part which is the anode. We will see it very soon if we are doing the biasing of a diode. You cannot just connect it to any conductive element. Anyhow, are we good? All right, so various forms of diode is presented over here. It is applied in whatever you want to do are we okay so this part this is one anode which is positive this part is the cathode which is the negative so now that we have the general overview of the diode and we've seen various forms let's dive deep into the diode what do we do to diodes we are going to do what we call biasing 
Are we okay? By us and meaning we are going to pass current through the PN junction of the diode. So forward bias is a condition that allows current to pass through the PN junction. So in simple terms, let's try to explain forward bias. So in order to achieve forward biasing, what we are going to do is that we will need an external voltage source. Well, we are calling it a V bias. This is an external voltage source that we are going to power the diode with. We will also need a resistor. And we know that the function of this resistor is going to control the current in an amount that the diode will not want explode or get damaged. Are we okay? It is going to control the current. So here, what we are going to do is that first, we have our V bias, which is the voltage source. We also have our external resistor. In order to achieve forward biasing, we always, always connect the negative part of the external voltage to the negative part of the what? The diode. And we are also going to connect the positive side of the voltage source to the positive side. If you interchange them, that is a different form of biasing. Are we good? So forward bias means positive voltage, positive region of the diode. Negative terminal of the voltage to the negative region of the diode. Is that clear? All right, so now that we've achieved, how is current going to be produced or going to be passed through this diode? What we are going to see is that if the positive side of the V bias, which is the voltage source, is connected to the P region and N part is also connected to the negative terminal, we are going to see, unlike charges here, positive toward negative. Remember, the positive side of the V bias is going to pull electrons from the end type, the end side towards the other side, right? So we can see from this diagram that, yes, this is our voltage source, positive terminal, negative terminal, connected. Since the positive wants to attract the negative electrons to itself, we can see a net movement of the negative from the end region. They are in patches, they are moving towards the positive side, right? So this movement is going to create a current through the diode. Are we good? Yes, it is going to create a current through the diode. And as these electrons are moving, through the depletion region. Remember, before this can happen, there is always a 0 0.7 volt that needs to be overcome. Remember, anytime the depletion region is formed, there is what a barrier or a potential for the other electrons to what, overcome. That is what the barrier potential, right? And it is 0 0.7 for silicon. So, we need the voltage source to be greater than the 0 0.7 so that it will overcome the barrier potential, right? So now that the electrons have gained much energy greater than the 0 0.7 volts, they are going to move past the barrier, right? And as they are going, they are going to be combined with the holes over here. Let's call this as A and as B. Electrons from the B region are moving into the A. So they are going to combine with the holes and their absence at the B is also going to create other holes, right? It is going to create other holes. So you see that electrons will be attracted this way and it will be like in a circular form moving in that direction. Are we good? So as we circulate the electrons, in and out of the diode, there's going to be a current being passed, right? And this is what we are calling as forward biasing. One, we should know that the voltage source should have greater energy 
comparing to the barrier potential, which is 0 0.74 silicon. Two, the positive side of this voltage source should be connected to the positive side of the diode and negative to the negative side. Is that right? So as the resistor is also here, it is going to control the amount of current such that we do not damage the diode. Are you okay? All right, so this is all about forward bias. Let's look at the reverse bias. As the name implies, reverse, meaning there's change of what? Polarity. If first this is positive, it is going to change to negative in the opposite direction. So for the reverse, we are going to connect the negative terminal of the voltage source to the positive part of the diode or the semiconductor, then connect the positive side to the negative terminal. Right. So now, what do we see? Please pay attention. The reverse biasing is very interesting. You can see that this place is more of positive than what? Negative. And this place is more of negative. So what we are going to see is that for forward biasing, the electrons are going to move this direction. But here, what we see is there is a positive terminal connecting a negative terminal. So electrons will be tempted to move in this direction towards the reward, the positive. So they will rather move in this direction. Then the electrons here will also move in what? This direction. You see that. So they are moving in opposite direction. That's why we are seeing they are reverse. And as they are moving, please, from the basis and the idea of how the depletion region is formed, we can see that we are going to get an enlarged depletion region. Because more electrons are moving away from the end region, meaning they are creating more holes, right? So they are creating more holes. And here too, more electrons are going to combine with positive. So they are creating more electrons. Do you see that? So as they are going to be more opposites of each other on the other side, there's going to be a, a barrier created. Remember, once they are if there is a difference in the polarity, there's going to be a barrier. An electric field is going to be generated. So always reverse biasing is going to enlarge the depletion region. So let's look at this image. Although this is positive, this is negative. They are moving to the positive terminal of the voltage there. Electrons are also coming to the positive region. Now the absence of these electrons moving is going to create more positives on the side. And the coming in of more electrons is also going to create more negatives on the side. So when you look at the PN junction, there are more positives in the negative part and there are more negatives in the positive side. So the depletion region is going to be enlarged. And an enlarged depletion region means there is a large barrier potential. Right. OK, so this is what we are calling as reverse bias. Although there, there is a little current that passes in reverse biasing, the current is not as much as in forward bias. Just understand the basis of how it is formed and how we can analyze it. That's why I told you that you don't connect anyhow. Are we good? You make sure you know the P region, the N region, then you connect to make your analysis very good. Now there's an IV characteristics of forward bias and reverse bias, meaning current voltage diagram. So this is for forward bias. So in the forward bias, there's a forward current where we call the IF. We are calling this as the forward bias current. So we are plotting a graph of the forward bias current against the forward bias voltage. So this diagram is going to give us an idea. So what we see is that at the point zero, there is no movement. The graph is at zero. So as we increase the 
forward voltage, right? There's going to be some little current producing, little current producing until at a point we get to the 0 0.7 volt, which is the barrier potential for the silicon. Remember, we cannot get enough current until we break the potential created by what? The depletion region, right? So once we apply voltage up to that point, then the electrons will gain more energy to cross the barrier. So here, as more electrons cross the barrier, more current is going to be produced. So you can see that the current is producing. So even if we increase the voltage a little bit from the 0 0.7, more current is generated in that order. Are we okay? So you can see that although there's more current producing, but there's a less voltage applied. So this we can increase it maybe up to one volt and still obtain our maximum current produce are you okay all right so this is the diagram so the a means at point zero zero there's no current there's no voltage e means below the barrier potential we are having less current produce and c means above this barrier potential more current is going to be produced is that good all right now when we draw the iv characteristics for the reverse bias Reverse means everything is still in the opposite direction. The same way we are going to have at zero zero, we are seeing less or no current produced. So this means we are plotting the reverse voltage against the reverse current. And in the same case, we are going to have a movement until we reach what we call the Breakage of what? The reverse voltage, or this is a point where we are going to break the barrier potential such that we can get more current produced. So until we break the barrier potential for the reverse biasing, we are not going to get more current to be what? Produced. And this is very simple. So now if we combine the idea of the reverse and the forward, we are going to get a complete diagram like this, where for the forward, we have to break the barrier potential 0 0.7 before we get enough current. And we also have to break the reverse barrier before we can get more current through this. So this is very simple. In our next episode, we will do some more analysis of diode and dive deep into it. Thank you for watching this episode. Check out for the next episode for more understanding.